Oh, good job. Ông chúng mình chụp đẹp bằng cả bằng to, cái tầm nào cao này tệ bị thi sạm nạc cao. Lúc đang ăn sáng lăng đề cao vì thành phía bọt tầm miền, bọt tầm miền phía kỳ nặng bộ cô lên ông chụp đẹp. Có hẳn chơi nhà chỗ rùm nó không cần chụp nạc cao, sạm nạc cao ngay đi. Xôm cổ lộp đề cao chụp lộp thiên nó không sạm nạc cao ngay đi. Ngay bột đi sạm sập khai tổ lạ cho nằm phía bọn lập bấy. Cổ lộp phía kỳ này rương cả đây, miền bọt tầm miền đời lại chân chọn chọn nôn chia miền vọt miền đời bận tốt không luôn hàng cầm sao sao nạc cá tạm đây sầm lại đồng bọn chúng nhà sầm lại đồng bông nông đại sao miền một hai sáu phiền sau một con lục tiền một con lục đào thán chia bắt đầu từ nay ông về bắt đầu về thực hành chuyển từ tạm biệt vì nó mốc đồng nắng đang mà đang rập rập về ní đang bị cái là ung thư sức đề thân than tọp bận chậm được nông này sản phẩm đường sông sông phí sáu là sốt mùi bạn xung cướp lục thiên lục lục xây chợ cầm phía kia đường xa thiên này chuẩn xung đạp cả chạy top robot metro nhôm mộc nông địa bàn mùi mọng đặc biệt tin này cứ nè đại metro đại tổ chức cứ lục xây metro lima nguyễn một tuần mộc cứ lục xây metro mới xuân đi xung lục thiên an nhàn ông nhập đây an nhàn xung chơi May it please the court. My name is Lima Nguyen. I appear on behalf of the consolidated group of civil parties. I acknowledge and pay respect to the civil parties who are with us today in this room and also to the civil parties, victims and the general public sitting in the gallery. In this rebuttal, I will respond to the submissions made by Moon Chia's defense. My colleague, Mok Savanari, will later address Kirsten Pong's submissions. The topics that I will cover, roughly in this order, are Nunchi's claims to moral responsibility, the condition of enslavement, the language regime employed by the Khmer Rouge, forced transfer one, and discriminatory intent against the new people. Force transfer two, and the approach the defence have taken, in the presentation of evidence to portray and the existence of a policy to execute former Khmer Rouge Republic officials and finally Moonchi's rights to a fair trial. It's important that your honours take into account Moonchi's admission that one, he was a senior leader and two, that he accepts moral responsibility for events during the democratic Kampuchea. However, despite admitting in his closing brief to bearing responsibility for CPK policy, Nguyen Chia continues to deny that he has any legal responsibility for the crimes committed pursuant to those very policies. For Cambodia's population of victims, those policies had a very real effect lasting adverse generational harm and consequences. 31 civil parties gave evidence during this trial, many of them on victim impact, but there are millions of others. Stories just as heart-wrenching, of which these civil parties comprise but a representative sample. The civil parties submit that moral responsibility formalized through legal framework can transfer as legal responsibility. Moon Chia's admission to moral responsibility was an acceptance that part and parcel of his role as Deputy, Deputy Secretary of the Standing Committee came moral obligations. And we assert that gross breaches of those obligations require accountability. Now, unfortunately, the civil parties can only have their moral and collective reparations if he is found legally responsible. So, in light of all that's said and done, at the end of the day, 
Noon Chi's admission to moral responsibility does not amount to very much. Noon Chi's policies relating to the forced transfer set in motion three years eight months and 20 days of enslavement. These policies created a situation in which the regime had absolute control over its population. This absolute control entailed the absolute deprivation of people's freedom of movement, freedom of speech, privacy, right to human dignity, and every other fundamental right and freedom that is inherent to being a human being. The regime monitored, supervised and determined how every person behaved, spoke and conducted themselves at all times. It determined how every minute of their days were spent from when they woke up, their hours of work, what they ate, how they ate, how much they ate, who they married, when they slept. This control was exercised through the creation of an overarching system of forced collective labour, starvation, fear, apprehension, distrust and terror. And under this regime, the victims belonged to the state. The regime possessed their bodies and their minds, treating them as cogs in a machine, as shuttle to be moved around, to be worked and to be gotten rid of when it suited the regime. Now that, Your Honours, is the exercise of all the powers pertaining to the right of ownership over the Cambodian people, reducing them to the condition of slavery. And in our submission, this state of affairs is correctly characterised as a slave state. Now, at this point, I'll address the propaganda, the rhetoric, and the belligerent language that, back in 1975, permeated through the Khmer Rouge's actions and activities, and which now, in 2013, filter through the defense submissions. The Khmer Rouge created its own language regime, perhaps the best example of the kind of new speak and black white coined by George Orwell in his novel 1984. Where war is peace, ignorance is strength, and freedom is slavery. Newspeak is euphemistic language, perhaps uh, often used in political propaganda, standing for the opposite of what it actually means. Now, the purpose of Newspeak is ultimately to disguise the truth by deliberately representing it as a lie and representing lies as truth. When this is done, it is known as black white, where black is made to mean white, and white is made to mean black. I'll give some concrete examples of the sort of new speak used by the Khmer Rouge regime. The liberation of Phnom Penh really meant the enslavement of Phnom Penh's population. The evacuation of Phnom Penh really meant sending people to the killing fields. Re-education and study sessions were references to arbitrary detention and summary executions. Nguyen Chi's defense, in essence, agree that the Khmer Rouge propagated newspeak. They state that warlike metaphors were used by the CPK to describe ideological and political struggles. Now, in truth, this violent metaphorical language was used to justify Nguyen Chi's aggressive destructive and criminal policies and his incitement to violence against people he labelled enemies. Nguyen Chi claims that the enemy of the party was not the people themselves, but their state of mind. He argues that getting rid of the enemies was not a reference to the individual, but to the feudalist mentality and systems. In this context, he says that CPK documents instructing Kedra to attack, purge, smash, cleanse the enemy can only be interpreted as smashing capitalism, smashing feudalism, smashing imperialism. While the civil party certainly suffered the brunt of this new speech, they ask exactly how do you separate 
and someone's state of mind. The regime's answer was to smash the person. In this trial, Doik gave crucial evidence about the meaning assigned to these terms and how these words connected to the policies established by the senior leaders. Firstly, Doik gave evidence that the party's policies included to smash all enemies. When asked what smash meant, he said smash means executed. And he confirms that, I quote, the ultimate goal is that the person is dead, unquote. The civil parties perfectly understood this new speak. They knew that if they stood out, they would be re-educated and ultimately smashed. Civil party Trey Pal stated that smash meant to kill. It's precisely clear, no doubt. As for the term Anka, Doik said, I use the word Anka to refer to the party central committee or any person uh, representing Pol Pot or the party Pol central committee. He also said, I personally regarded Anka as sometimes Nunchia, sometimes Pol Pot. Now this accords with what the civil parties understood of the term Anka, meaning the Khmer Rouge leadership. Nunchia was indeed the father of Newspeak. He claims that he was personally in charge of propaganda and education. He said in open court, I was tasked with educating revolutionary political line and to educate people with regards to the love of the nation. In Nunchi's new speak, contradictions such as love of the nation on one hand and the killing of its people on the other became synonymous. Phrases such as life and death contradiction were used to indoctrinate the regime's philosophy, its policies and its politics. Doik gave evidence that, I quote, the contradiction between us and our enemy is the life and death contradiction which means that for one to prosper, the other one must die, unquote. Nunchi's victims understood perfectly what re-education and education meant. Civil party Sun Sim and Hung Chun Ta both gave evidence that those who went to training and re-education never returned. Now, with all due respect, the defence submissions are filled with new speech and black white. For example, they continue to argue that what they call the evacuation of Phnom Penh was not unlawful. Well, first of all, we need to put a stop to this black-white. This was not an evacuation. It was a forced movement of a civilian population, not from a place of danger into a place of safety, as the term evacuate would normally suggest but rather from a place of safety, the safety of their own homes, to a place of danger to the killing fields. Nunchia and Kusumpol's continual justifications about the reasons for the forced transfer make a mockery of the victims. They continue the line that their purpose was to implement an economic policy that, I quote, they genuinely believed was in the interest of the Cambodian people, unquote. Let me say this in response. Only if freedom is slavery and only if black is white can the death of an estimated 2 million Cambodians be in the best interest of the Cambodian population. The civil parties ask that your honours put an end to the new speech and the black white. The black white that mean, that's been perpetuated by the Khmer Rouge and by the defence. Because until the truth is revealed for what it really was and labelled what it actually is, there cannot be real justice. At this point, I'll move to the topic of forced transfer one. From the beginning, when Nunchia and the senior leaders decided to transfer the population, they deceived the people. They falsely represented that the reason was that if American bombs were imminent, that was a lie then, and it's a lie now. Another example of Nunchia's deceit is the claim that his intentions were to save the population from famine. 
And in doing so, the defence assert that the forced movement was in itself lawful, necessary and logical. In paragraph 251 of the defence brief, the defence claimed that there was an impending food crisis. They say there was only six days of rice supplies in Phnom Penh. They claim that after this, there would be no food at all. Now, I note that this assertion comes with no references, no sources. No evidence. Equally outrageous is paragraph 261, where the defence states that I, and I quote, thousands of people would have died in Phnom Penh if the evacuation had not taken place, unquote. Again, no sources, no references, just more sweeping statements to excuse the mass crimes. Civil parties gave evidence that loads of rice were taken away from the villages. Denise Alfonso gave evidence that, I quote, after each monsoon, they loaded up the rice stocks from the village. They left a minimum amount for us to have two bowls of soup or porridge per day, and they took all the rest away. We fought over scraps of food with their dogs, and their dogs had more to eat than we did, unquote. If Nunchi and Thu Simpong really had compassionate intentions, why, under their leadership, were rice supplies taken away from the villages, leaving the people to starve, leaving the people to fight over scraps of food with the dogs? Your Honours, the facts speak for themselves. Nunchia continues to blame others. He claims to know nothing about what was going on in the country where he was brother number two. He denies this title, but that is certainly how everybody knew him and referred to him. Nunchia persistently blames others for the decisions that he made. He blames Prince Sin. He blames Von No. He blames the United States, Vietnam, Thailand. And when that's not enough, he blames the zone leaders and the local leaders and the authorities who implemented the policies which he admits to having made. And in doing so, he demonstrates a total absence of remorse and lack of insight into his criminality. Then and now, Nunchia does say, perhaps to his credit, at paragraph 210, 201 of his brief, that he would like to accept the mistakes that others had made. I quote, because I am the leader, but this mistake is the unintentional result of how we did our jobs, not because of principle to smash people. This is at odds with Deutsch's evidence that, I quote, in real practice, there was a movement to evacuate the population. And in that evacuation movement, there was a sub-movement to smash people, unquote. Deutsch also gave evidence that, I quote, the policy was that whenever the party regarded someone as an enemy, we had to smash him or her. We had no way to contest it, unquote. Unlike Nun Chia, Doik had no reason to lie. He's already been tried and given a life sentence. He had nothing to gain. Importantly, as the head of S21, he had contemporaneous knowledge about the ins and outs of the regime. Doik said that after Sonsen, Nun Chia was his boss. Your Honours, we ask that you find Doik to be a credible and reliable witness. As for Nung Chia's statement that the massive and tragic human consequences of his policies was an unintentional mistake, the civil parties argue that this was no mistake. Nung Chia's policies were intentional. They were aimed at a total control of the population by whatever means necessary, including at the cost of two million human lives. As the prosecution said, for the senior leaders, the means justified the ends. Nunchi's excuses and justifications do nothing to exonerate his individual criminal responsibility before this court. Every decision has its consequences. Nunchi admits responsibility for the decision over false transfer one. He is therefore necessarily also responsible for the consequences of that decision. He is held to account 
for his intentional conduct in formulating the policies that authorised and directed others to carry out acts which directly led to the extermination of a large portion of Cambodia's population. The civil parties demand an answer to this question. Knowing what he now knows, would Nguyen Chia have made the same decisions that he did in 1975? We ask that Nguyen Chia personally address this question when he answers in this final statement. Turning to the issue of discriminatory intent against the new people, Nguyen Chia defence argue that Nguyen Chia had no discriminatory intent and therefore cannot be found guilty of the crime of political persecution. They say this is because the new people were treated, and I quote, more like the favoured group, the base people, unquote. In carrying out this line of defence, the Nguyen Chia defence has adopted the same news speech employed by the senior members of the standing committee. The defence argued that the new people suffered additional hardship because they were inexperienced with farming. As the theory goes, the new people, I quote, experienced for the first time the difficulties of new life working in the fields, as rural Cambodians had done for millennia, unquote. Contrary to this, your honours have heard civil parties' evidence about working from 5am to 10pm every day, exposed to the rain and sun, without adequate food, under threat of violence and murder, and constantly under the surveillance of Big Brother, Anka. Now, favourable favorable treatment would normally imply that one has consented to and actually enjoys the treatment received. To demonstrate the forced coercive nature of the transfer, civil parties Su Sotivi and Gim Sovan both gave evidence that they were ordered to leave the city at gunpoint and threatened to be shot if they did not leave. There's been ample evidence given before this court about the horrific acts against human dignity committed both during and after the forced transfers. I'll not repeat all of that evidence, but in summary, the collective picture painted by the witnesses and civil parties can be described as hell on earth. The Nguyen Chia defence asserts that when they arrived at their destination, the new people were treated equally as the base people. Well, this is true, insofar as both groups were equally rendered into the condition of slavery. However, the civil party submit that the new people, in particular, were subjected to discrimination. The first step to discrimination is the identification process. In this case, the evidence is that the new people were identified based on their perceived political affiliation. Civil party Chowney gave evidence about being identified as a 17 April person. He said, we were not treated equally. We were regarded as imperialists, or rather capitalists. They regarded us as those who reaped the benefits of the peasants. Civil parties Yos Fal and Yim Sovan and many others gave evidence that they were required to submit biographies and to identify their previous occupations, their status and those of their family members. Civil party Le Boni said, I quote, their intention was to eradicate us so that newborn people would have new ideas following Ankar's thinking, unquote. This is corroborated by civil party Denise Alfonco, who gave evidence that Ankar wanted to eliminate the entire social class of individuals, intellectuals. They were intentionally letting us die of hunger. It was carefully premeditated and organised from A to Z. Unquote. Now, the second stage to persecution is severely depriving members of a group of one or more of their fundamental human rights. The prejudicial effect of Nguyen Chia's policies for the new people was clear and tangible. Uprooted from their homes, the city dwellers were forced to leave all their belongings, their family homes, their livelihoods. All the social structures that sustained their way of living was destroyed. Money and banking, schools and universities, shops and markets, temples and places of worship, these were all eradicated. 
The people were then expected to refashion themselves to adapt to life in the countryside. Their deprivation of fundamental rights was based on the perceived political affiliations and values. They were classified as capitalists, as feudalists, imperialists, terms that were designated to enemies of the regime. And on this basis, they were deprived of all their fundamental human rights and freedoms. The impact on Phnom Penh residents was shattering. Civil party Tung Sokka describes the evacuation from Phnom Penh could be compared to a bomb exploded to shatter all the families in Phnom Penh. We separated from family members, from friends, and we suddenly lost all that we earned. Apart from the deliberate smashing of supposed enemies, the civil parties also provided ample example and evidence about the deaths that resulted from starvation and the conditions of forced labour in the cooperatives. As for the charges of extermination, both defence teams have disputed the death toll. The civil parties query, how many deaths do the defence consider necessary to meet the threshold for this crime? Whether there was one million, one hundred thousand, one thousand, even one hundred, there is overwhelming evidence that many people were killed. Even Kirsten Pong's defence have acknowledged that even one victim is one too many. The civil party submits that in law, to make out the crime of extermination, there is no need to establish that any specific number of people died, or that a very large number of people died. So long as all the substantive elements of the crime are made out. Jurisprudence from the Court of Appeal in the ICTY case of Milan Lukic upholds the trial chamber's finding that the killing of 60 people amounted to the crime of extermination as a crime against humanity. The citation for this case is provided in the list of documents that were uh, distributed to parties this morning. So on the totality of facts, civil parties argue that the impact of Nun Chi's forced transfer policy on the new people was in fact and was intended to be discriminatory. My learned friend's client might call that favourable treatment, but here's what my client, Mr Nu Hwan, has to say. I quote, the so-called organisation at that time was a brutal regime. They wanted Cambodian people to live in freedom, in a sovereign state with territorial integrity. You wanted people to have clothes to wear, shoes to wear and a cap to wear as well. But the fact was that this policy does not apply to everybody. In other words, there is no one-size-fits-all in their policy. They designed the cap, one size of the cap, and then they forced people to actually wear it. And that does not fit with the people. Now, we cannot actually cut our feet to fit the shoe. It should be the other way around, unquote. Mr Nu Huan was speaking specifically about the prejudicial treatment of new people by policies made by the senior leadership. Nun Chi's policies, which forced new people to conform to one standard, to become what they are not, with the result of severe harm and mistreatment imposed upon this group. Cutting their feet to fit the shoe, as Mr Nu Huan said, that, Your Honours, in our submission, is the definition of discrimination. We submit that the adverse treatment received by the new people meets the requisite threshold to establish that there was discriminatory intent that was required for the persecution of a civilian population on political grounds as a crime against humanity. Your Honours, at this point, I'll turn to the subject of forced transfer too, and in particular about the selective use of witness statements by the Nunchia defence. The defence asks Your Honours to acquit Nunchia on the basis of random extracts of witness statements taken out of context. One example is the defence use of the testimony of civil party Lei Boni. 
The Nunchi defense asks your honors to find that the victims were happy to join in the second population movement because there was more food in Batambang. Conveniently, the defense have omitted the fact that Ms. Leiboni had been told by a commune chief that food would be plentiful in Batambang. And this was a pretext to trick her into partaking in the second forced transfer without resisting. The defense also deleted her testimony that she did not volunteer to be transferred but was in fact ordered to go. At the time, Ms. Leiboni was a mother of three young children. The family had just been forcibly marched from Phnom Penh on foot and without sufficient food. She had a choice to stay in the first cooperative and to face starvation and anticipated punishment for disobeying the order to move or to submit to the second forced transfer with perhaps a faint hope that the conditions in the next cooperative might be a little bit better. Faced with this cash 22, who would not choose the prospect of more food and the potential possibility of a better life for their children? The Nunchi defence ask your honours to find that food and basic necessities were provided to victims of the second forced transfer. To support this, they again misuse Leibonese testimony, claiming that the physical health of evacuees was normal. Now, whilst the defence have persistently complained about the importance of providing background and context to the evidence provided before this court, they have no qualms about failing to tell the whole story when it suits them. If the defence had but read an additional four lines of transcript, they would have seen Ms. Leiboni's evidence that, I quote, when time passed by, we did not have enough food to eat. We ate the food that was very little. We ate food that made our body parts become swollen. We noted that the pigs had, were given more food than they gave to the human beings, unquote. This is but one example of the defence's irresponsible, selective use of witness statements to mislead this court when it suits them. The Nunchi defence have similarly misquoted civil party Yim Sovan and Denise Alfonco and many others. In making factual findings relating to the forced transfers, the civil parties ask that Your Honours give due weight to the civil parties' oral and written testimonies and to abstain from taking the defence assertions at face value without close scrutiny. Your Honours, at this point, I'll turn to the topic of two-pole train and, in particular, of the existence of a policy to execute former Khmer Republic soldiers and officials. The evidence of civil parties, both live and in statements admitted by this chamber, taken in combination, demonstrate that the Khmer Republic officials were targeted as enemies of the regime, and they were targeted in an organised, uniform, widespread and systematic manner. As such, the policy can be established from the accumulation of evidence from the direct witnesses on the ground, evincing the ill-treatment and killing of this composition in the pattern. The witnesses and civil parties have been removed from the process of the formulation of these high-level policies, but they can tell you what they saw from where they stood. Your Honours, I am aware that I'm running out of a little bit of time, and I won't go through the civil party testimonies in relation to the ill-treatment and targeting of non-null regime uh, members. But Your Honours are asked to make factual findings on the accumulation of circumstantial evidence. If Your Honours are satisfied with the totality of evidence given about the identification, singling out, torture, ill-treatment and executions of former non-null officials is credible and that this treatment was implemented in a uniform, systematic and widespread manner, Your Honours can reasonably and logically infer from these facts that the implementation was conducted in accordance with the centrally formulated policy instructions from the senior leaders. I move now to fair trial rights. It's quite an indulgence for the Nunchi team to stand before the population of victims in Cambodia and state that Nunchi has not been afforded the presumption of innocence. 
All I can say, in contrast, is that his victims were never given any presumption of innocence before they were subjected to torture, ill-treatment, arbitrary detention or summary executions. The victims at S21 come to mind particularly as they face certain extrajudicial killings, and Nun Chi knows very well what went on in S21. His national defence conceded that he received 25 out of over 4,000 confessions, of which six of which he personally annotated. As for the establishment of the extraordinary chambers, Nun Chi argues that this hybrid tribunal was established because a domestic court might not try the case to international standards. But he also claims that he can never have a fair trial because most of the judicial officers in this court are nationals of France, the United States and their closest allies. Using Khmer Rouge logic, the defence has called this a trial against ideology, arguing the judges could never fairly adjudicate this matter because they come from the same so-called imperialist countries from which Nun Chia purportedly sought to protect Cambodia. Apart from demonstrating a high degree of disrespect for this judicial process, these remarks actually bear close resemblance to speech, which propagates discrimination on the basis of race ethnicity and nationality, the argument being that by virtue of being French or being of Anglo-Saxon origin, your honours are inherently biased and are unable to appropriately or competently or impartially adjudicate and apply the facts, evidence and law. Perhaps what Nun Chia is actually saying is that no court, whether domestic or international, has the capacity or independence or competence to try him. Perhaps what he means is that he should not be tried at all. But for the masses of victims, this trial is about the end of impunity. In respect of the need to call witnesses to establish Nun Chia's intent, it is our submission that any evidence that any other person could possibly possibly provide about Nun Chi's intentions would constitute hearsay, opinion evidence or inadmissible speculation. From the civil party's perspective, who better to know the intentions of Nun Chia than the man himself? But rather than subjecting himself to be examined and cross-examined in the ordinary way of giving evidence, Nun Chia instead waits to have the last word, the final statements. Let me make it very clear so that the defence do not twist my words in saying that the victims do not respect the rule of law. The civil party certainly respects Nun Chia's rights to remain silent and at the same time to challenge the evidence against him. For sure, giving Nun Chia all the due process that his victims never received is indeed the right way to try this man. Ultimately, the Nun Chia defence claimed that this trial is a manifestation of victor's justice. Well, the civil parties have waited nearly 40 years for justice, for truth's light to be shed in a forum such as this. But even if there is a conviction on these limited charges, the victims are certainly not winners. To the contrary, they have suffered irreparable loss unspeakable harm, and in these circumstances, one cannot say that a conviction would mean that they have won. In conclusion, this trial is about the initial movement, the initial moments when the Khmer Rouge took power on the 17th of April 1975, and how those first few days changed Cambodian history forever. The participation of the civil parties has enabled this process to meet with, present, and to confirm front, the human faces behind the tragic history, the faces of both the victims and the perpetrators of criminal policies that were executed in the name of the faceless Onkar. Justice comes in many forms, and in a, rule, in a court of law, the civil parties, for them, justice manifests as the right to be heard and to be believed, the right to have harm acknowledged, and the right to reparation for harm suffered. The civil parties and the victims entrust this court with the task of giving them the justice they deserve. 
Your Honours, this concludes my rebuttal to move to the closing statements, and I now hand the floor to my colleague, Ms. Mok Savannari, to address the submissions of Kirsten Paul. ជាតិបងនេះខ្ញុំសូមគ្រប់អង្គជំនុំជម្រះសូមគ្រប់សាធារណៈជននឹងដើមបណ្ដឹងរាប់បវេណីដែលនេះខ្ញុំតំណា
กดบันเฟอร์กาลูกน้อยอย่างเช่นสนาจิมวยนึงถนัดดอกนอมจอนกบุกไมโครฮอมเติร์กบันแตงตังเอาการนอดดมในสำคัญสำคัญมีการตัวตู้คอเติร์กดอทมโดยได้ปริญญาบันเลือกรวยหมดหายหายบนโต๊ะปีกาดูโรลมในบอมนี่กดมันได้ในยัยท้าปลดปลดบันเฟอร์คอตีกดมันโต๊ะกอมโตรสมัยนี่ตาสกามบอกเพียงต่างอ่อนนี่มันบานบางไฮบานบางไฮเปียวไว้บาลกหนึ่งกรมระบอบลกปลดปลดมันแมนเชียปัดปุ่ยแต่มวยหายเปอร์เซ็นต์บางยังกระเละมือเตอร์เอาไว้ได้บานกาลางในขนมเปย์จุ่มเลี้ยวไปเชื่อจนเจนปีลมเนื้อทานหนึ่งกากับสำหรับได้ระบอบนี่บานเรียบจำหลังยังหนึ่งเคยอย่างจุบ่าปีกาปัดยาจัดระบอบลกในขนมกาจูรุมจุ่มไหนดึกน้อมกัมพูชีเอาเตอร์เชียปรเตยังมหาอจ่าโมฮาโลดพลอได้ไปเชื่อจนตั้งอ้อตระบังคอมไอทเวอร์ไซน์เนื้อเลสะซับในจนรูมเชื่อตระบอกลุ่นไอแต่ตระบันขมายก็หอมสำหรับได้มาเชื่อบายอย่างเป็นประสบบมพดแต่ตรงชิมวยน้องเพียบอาจเชื่อเจ็บบานในกลุ่มนอตไฮสตับจมหลายสะใสกระโอเชื่อสึกได้ทลายกาจิลิเลอาเซาตระบอกดามดังรับประเวณีชมสมจุมริบจุนอังจุมนมจุมเรธาเมตวิกาเปียกระไดหลงนวลเชียกระไดเชียหลงคิวสัมพรบ้านฝึกกะเบาสไลด์ได้มันตรมตรายแต่เลือกสิ่งใดสมรัยดอกบอกอังจุมนมจุมเรธาได้บ้านเจงในไงตีหมอกให้ใครมีตัวนาชนามปีปอนดาปีอังจุมนมจุมเรธาเหมือนได้เทนนี่เมตวิกาเปียกระไดธาไอกระซาแตงอ้อนนุเหมือนตระบานเชื่อเจดได้อังจุมนมจุมเรธาหรือตระบานเชื่อเจดได้ติดตุ้ยได้อังจุมนมจุมเรธาดูลอยเนื้อขนมกระทะคันติมอภัยใบอ่องจุ่มนมจุ่มเละบ้านเหมือนเจ๊ยังจุ่มมาเนื้อเป็ดได้กับนอตไฮดอสักไข่กำอมปีปัญหาเนียนกลายปีอมเปอร์หรืออากาปะเกตยาดบอจุนจอบเจ้าหนึ่งตามกาวิพิบทอมเตอร์บ้านโยลเคยถ่ายจอบเปะป้อนกู้อัจจุเจ๊ยบ้านหรือเหมือนเตอร์บ้านปะได้ใส่เจ้าดอยเละคันดอยเละคันวินิชัยในวิทยาปัสสปมใบกระทะคันติใบในวิทยาปัสสปมอ่องจุ่มนมจุ่มเร่หนึ่งตัวตัวโยกพอตั้งระบบบกโก้ได้มีตุ่มร่องชีกับนอตไฮสตับจุ่มลอยหรือโปรเตจเร็กได้เหมือนจำไม่ดมเร็กไอเมนวัตเตอร์มีนระบบปุ๊กเกอร์ขนมไซวานาการลอยหายเหนือกล้ามและคันมวยจุ่มนวลไอไอหรือไอกระซาแตงนิบานไม่ยังติดตัวใบเจนในขนมมายังที่ตุ๊กใบจีนในขนมกระทะคันติมอภัยผมบ้วนอ่องจุ่มนมจีเรียบบ้านเหมือนเจ้าท่าไอ้กระซ่าดอกบอดดาวเหมือนดังรอบประเวณีเปียส้มดอกบอดดาวเหมือนดังรอบประเวณีได้เติร์กบ้านเฟอร์ได้อ่องกาอันตรการไอ้เติร์กบ้านดอกในตุ่มงวดจีพอตังติตุ๊กก็ได้ก็โยงตัวตามจิตใจซ่าดังการอนุวัตในตุลาการอันตรจิตอ่องจุ่มนมจุ่มเรียบบ้านเหมือนเจ้าท่ากวาดได้ซาเซ็ตในขนมกาวีดมไลโปรดมีแตงโนท่าไอ้จีเจ้าบ้านได้รู้ตีหายอ่องจุ่มนมจุ่มเรียกกบมาบังเจ้าเนื้อมูลละหายดอยมูลละหายซ้อมสลบเนื้อกระตามมวยจุ่มนวลแต่กอดไอ้ดอยพิบเจ้าเจ้าบานเตลือปอร์เมียนต่างอ่อนนุ่มขยมส้มบังเจ้าท้าเนื้อขนมสาวนาคากรลองมกดาวเหมือนดังรับประเวณีบานเลือกล่างย่างลมอัดเนื้อกระตาจีชานแต่ปอร์เมียนดอกบัวปุกกอดไอ้ยังเตลือบานเจ้าเจ้าบานดาวตุลาการนี่เมื่อทวีกาปีกระไดนุ่นจี๋เนื้อขนมสาวนาคากรลอมมองมันบ้านเลิกล้างเนื้ออ่อมน้าอ่อมน้าดอกเจี๊ยเละน้ามวยปลอดช่างเตอร์นึงสิ่งใดใจกาบอกน้ำเหมือนดังรอบประเวณีบ้านล้อน้ามวยลอยหายตามรอยเจี๊ยสิ่งใดใจกาบอกปุกกอดได้บ้านได้จูเตอร์ต่อลาคาชิมส้มจิมริบจูนอ่องจิมนมจิมเรียทักกบบ้านด้อนเนื้อพอตางได้เมียนดมไหลกูกูไอชื่อเจี๊ยบานดับใบกวมโตเตอร์เนื้อพอตางตัวขลุ่นได้ปลอดจูนอ่องจิมนมจิมเรียแต่ตรงเตอร์นึงอาจจะเพียบในอุกตกรรมจิมูลธานดับใบบังไฮบันไทม์ถาทิพซ้ำในบอลลมเบอร์ได้ตรึกบานเจ้าประกันคือบานเกาะเมียนหลังหากได้พอตั้งตั้งอ้อนลูกบานบันเจาะยางจุบมาปีจุ่มเริ่มในการชื่อจับได้กดบานตัวตัวโรงโรหมตัวไปนี่จีบบันโตติดนิคยมสมทวีการกัดสมกองมวยจุ่มนวลแต่ตรงตัวหนึ่งกากาปิกได้ดอกบอลลูกเมททีวีคิวสมดอกบอลลูกเมททีวีลูกคิวสมพรนึกน้องกาได้กอดเฟอร์สิกได้ทลายกาได้ตัวหมดปัญหาตีมวยได้เข้มจังเลิกจุ่มเรียบจูนอ่องจุ่มนมจุ่มเรียบในเปย์นี่คือแตะตรงเตือนนังสำรองในสักไข่กัมเ
để quạt bản lực lang được nông sản nạp to mọt bỏ quạt có đôi chiếc sản nạp chỉ lệ lệ à sò nhóm trong chụp đôi chun ông chụp nôm chụp đẹp tha quạt bản lực lang đôi mình bình lỉnh quạt bản bỏ sai đôi mình trầm trồ nơi sầm rong tiếng ồn nu hỏi pra mình trâu bỏ đi bọt chạy sai đại sự khay cam tiếng nu bàn phở hãy đọc bài bài giáo dục tiết thoa nâng cao sai độ cao bậc đang bận đường đọc bài này sna xong ông chụp nôm chụp đẹp meta bị nợ đại ban đặt ồn nâng đại meka đại meka trong bài giáo của từ lớp cướp sầm răng lấy sợi dây cam để mê thử vi cà phê đầy bàn lực lang nơi không sao để than chỉ có đầy sao để than bên trong được bọc luôn ta mình miền tây trắng châm lợn nơi chấm nổi ma chấm nôn chịu tia họ đặng bảy bằng hai đầu ăn chấm nôm chấm rẻ tẹt tông tân nâng sợi dây cam được bao lục bông sầu mê thử vi cà phê đầy bàn lực lang chỉ trang nơi sợi dây cam được bao lục bông sầu quạt bàn lực lang thả bông sầu ban để dây thả để hiền khai có để hiền luôn nói phượng bạc bạc chia chôn đặng bay sang kêu kêu to bạc chia chôn miền tây châu rôm chôn mũi khai có hòm bông sầu thả để hiền khai có hòm chật là o che chui vô asa được bao bạc chia chôn tại khi nâng bằng hai ông chôm nôm chôm đại chun được bay này thả bông sầu quạt bàn để dây đôi khi đại thả khai có hòm cài sa hào nè khai cơ hòm cơ họ bị chia chôn khai cơ hòm ban phượt bà bị chia chôn nơi còn lại na để kê vai ban tật đầy kê đốt tè kê sầm lấp mê phùm kê đánh bị chia chôn kia bị chia chôn ở tận nơi không phải nơi không tổng quát tị đọc nơi sắc khay cam được bao lục bằng số bậc tệ chưa được xem là ca cho ngày tị đọc hai mươi sáu năm pi pon đọc bảy nơi mau đọc đọc mùi nề tì nơi mà phải bầm mùi vị nề tì lộc bằng số ba nị dây thả, mai cả hôm kê chập đam cài sả hào tăng pi năm chật sợ bảy cả am rạch càng chập đam tùm lệ cọp bảy. bọn tao mới tiệt quạt nị dây thả, tăng pi năm một phần bộ môn đôi chật sợ bảy dựng đằng chỗ ba ông pi ở vậy để mai cả hôm thua nơi việt sài, kê chập kê dọc phùm kê đốt tè kê sầm lấp mê phùm hai nẹt miên ẩm nai kê kia bị chia chôn tới khung bảy dựng đăng thà cả cọ được bọc mai cọ hòm vẫn tai dựng smart tập mai cọ hòm cạnh chân đôi chim mật chuột bài thua sừng kềm cả na cái miếng chơi chân nhé dựng sừng không thà mai cọ hòm bẩn thủ vẫn tai tam bật dựng cho lòng men dựng phơi vị phiền nội dụng bài khó men nội chia sầm tây được bao lục bông sầu tẹt tông tân nông lủng hô và chia chôn mao ti krong phnom penh đại mê thứ vi ca biết đây an thà đòi xa cả tổng lệ cọ bài được bao amrik càng nhầm sông lợn nội sầm tây được bao lục bông sầu nếu không tổng quan tị đọc pi này bất tệ chả đọc đại hai ni hao chỉ mua bạch chia chôn nơi việt sài đột mộc nông bình hai nông bình và miền trung luôn bạch chia chôn và hai bay liền nè kê khai khai có hòm thực bạc mền kê khai mây khai có hòm hai kê khai am để căng tổng lệ cọp bài lộc ban thì dây tha kê mau nông bình kê khai khai có hòm tổng lệ cọp bài tai lộc mình ban thì dây tha cọt ban tha đôi khi nhận đại tha kê mau nông bình bị pro kê khai khai có hòm thực bạc tại tôi chỉ muốn nâng ông nào ông nào để gọi lực lang thang không ai có hôm ở bờ chia chôn sập bay rong chăm không ai có hôm một đòn nơi tiệt long phnom penh nơi không tổng quan tiệt đập buôn chi bị xa không ai lộc bông sâu ban để dây thang bị chia nắm chật sập bảy đã đập bông bơm mây xa đo mà ha rong rương với tình yêu mình tên nơi phnom penh chăm sóc bệnh chết thang quan bệnh men sầm đau thang bờ chia chôn với tình yêu đại pro am rạch cam tùm lệ gặp bay tai mầm mộc bên nó tê tai quan sầm đau thang với tình yêu đại pro sầm kềm ta nè na chỉ phía kia nơi sầm kềm luôn mai có hôm chỉ phía kia môi nơi sầm sầm kềm luôn mai có hôm miếng ca tự tu có tới dạng bất bạc cọt chỉ môi nơi sầm kềm luôn quan ban tha to tự tiệt hai ni hai cái na mai có hôm một đôi dương pay men dương pay pro dương đăng biểu với đại mai có hôm thôi nơi việt sài bẩn tai miếng dịch đây sầm khâm tiệt thừa mệt nếu tệ tông chìm muối năng lực bằng số khiêm lực lang tệ tông chìm muối thật sự khay cam được bao lực steel header đại nét xây bản lực lang thả bằng hai đặc biệt bằng hai thả ong cam mình ai cục cung từng o hạ vậy để cả lang nơi ti chôn được bọt màn nơi không trong cái thang khăn ti ok nét xây bản lực lang thả dùng tam lực lực header sẽ khay cam được bao cột mà chấm bạc mình ai cực lòng bàn tệ đối với những nhóm lớp sạch hay cam tiền sòng sầm răng này ở bờ tệ chỉ được sai mà cả bờ lục steel header ở bàn bình lệnh nè say tham miên bay nhà văn nơi phnom penh bàn bạc lục header thả kê mình đăng bì riêng ở vậy để cả làng nơi phnom penh tại nhóm sông bạc thả quạt này dây bay nhà văn nơi cái lại ní cứ quạt này dây ông pi bay nhà văn đang mình men chia sầm chia độ bạc bạc lục header bàn lược làng thả dương này dây ông pi bay nhà văn mình men chia sầm chia độ bạc cứ chỉ bay nhà vốn đại sự nơi tiệt long phnom penh, 
ให้กบ้ามันทายถ่าหาเมียนกาดในมาจุ่มนวลทีมนุษย์แตงอ้อนนี่ในใจเรื่องราวประหารประหารคณิปรับขยมปนใต้กับเมียนปอดเมียนต้ยปีนี้พองได้ได้เกิดหลอกปรับขยมปนใต้ปีเมียนกาดในคลาดได้มนุษย์มาจุ่มนวลสุดทัศน์ในขนมประเภทปัญญาวันหนึ่งคือกดหลอกบ้านเตอร์จูบกดหลอกบ้านเตอร์เคยตีจุนบอดได้เชื่อเหมือนเมียนไปช้างเชื่อเหมือนเลือกเอาไว้แต่ตรงจุ่มนวลหลอกให้เดินเตี้ยเต้ยยิ้มส้มในใจแต่กันแน่จุ่มในหลอกฟิลิปชอตกดเลือกช้างไปหลอกฟิลิปชอตเราแวกเกนบันติเตียนจีชานถ่านเลิกฟิลิปชอตเหมือนเมียนแหลกขณะสมบัติจีเนี่ยจุ่มเนียนเต้หลบฟ้านี่หลบฟ้านู่หลบอ่างตะเลอปอบพบได้เหมือนเมียนกาเจแหลกกูเอจีเจแบนก็เป็นใต้นึกน้องสักใครกำหลบบอลโลกแตงเนี่ยใส่องตาเอ่อกิเซแตงโลกกงสมอนบันเลิกล่างดอยโยงตะเลอสมรองจีชานในสมได้หลบบอลโลกชอตโดยฉะนั้นเขียมจองเจ้าชื่อสมนุ่มเมื่อเห็นเขียมจีเจท่าอ่องจุ่มนุ่มจุ่มเร่ก่อนหนึ่งเจ้าชื่อสมนุ่มมวยนี่โดยเขียมได้ถ้าใต้ก่อนในใจปีหลบชอตมวยน่ะหลบชอตได้สักใครกำเหมือนหรือก็หลุดช็อตได้สักใครกำได้กู้ไอตกเจ็ดบ้านเนื้อเป็ดได้สักใครกำนุกด้านเนื้อพอไปย่อจะด้านโกนได้ดอกบอกกอดจมน้อยมวยเตี้ยได้เลิกได้กอดและเลิกแต่ต้องจมวยนั่งสักใครกำดอกบอกดามันดังรอบประเวณีดับเบิ้ลบังฮันท่าหลุดคิวสมพรคือเชียมันดุได้หล่อปะได้ใส่สมโนกลานแม่สุดได้ทำไมมวยกอดบ้านเลิกเนื้อสักใครกำดอกบอกดามันดังรอบประเวณีนูหอนยมจมเรียงอ่อนจมน้อยจมเรียงทักกอดเลิกมันตรมตรายเต้กอดเลิกได้เหมือนเป็นหลิงกอดท่าดามันดังรอบประเวณีบ้านปรับกอดท่าหลุดคิวสมพรปะได้ใส่สมโนกนุ่งก็เป็นใต้กอดเล็กจุ่มเรียบอังจุ่มนมจุ่มเรียดดอกเจตนาท่าอังจุ่มนมจุ่มเรียดด้ามบันดังรับประเวณีนุบันชายปรับโตลากาได้ปรองประหยัดท่ากอดบันดังปอดเมียนิคือได้การลื้อต่อต่อปีเกมาคือจีเปียจอจามารามแกต้องจุ่มวยนังบอดิบอดในสังเครียมจนล็อกปีชนะมาปอมปมบุญโดยเจ็ดสิบต่อเจ็ดสิบรัมเมตวิกาเปียกได้บันเลิกล่างเนยสกัยกรรมบอดเลิกปองโชท่าเนยเปย์ได้ดำไรไว้คนนี้คือสมองจะเนี่ยงอกหายบานตุ่มแหลกกับพ่อตั้งอ้อตัวเลือดสังเครียมถ้าก้าวไปตัวนี้เราบอกไปเชื่อจนสมัยนู้คือเชื่อสังเครียมแต่เข้มส้มจุ่มนิบเข้มส้มสู้เชื่อสมนุ่มไม่กัดตัวตัวอ้างจุ่มนุ่มจุ่มแรงก็โดยเชื่อกรมเมตุวิกาเปียกได้เว้นทางเนี่ยหน้าเชื่อดำไรเนี่ยหน้าเชื่อสมองดำไรมุ้ยคือเชื่ออังเบรกกลางตุ่มแหลกกรอบใบเจ้าดำไรมุ้ยเตี้ยตามเหมือนเชื่อแต่เห็นข้างไม้ก็หอมแต่จะบังจุ่มมุ้ยนั่งอังเบรกได้หรือไอตาเนี่ยน่าเชื่อสมัยตาเหมือนเหมือนเชื่อไปเชื่อจนขมายสโลตรังไปเชื่อจนสีเวิร์ลตาเหมือนเหมือนเชื่อจนรองกรุดได้เขียงกับปงใต้ดำนางไอพอไปยาวเกินหรือไอตาขมายกับห้องขมิ้นกาตัวตัวคอเตอร์ในขนมสังเครียมดีเตอร์หรือไอแต่ต้องจุ่มมวยหนังกาโจรูมหรือบอลโลคิวสัมพอนในขนมกิ๊กไปจมสมรัยปีกาจุ่มเลียไปเชื่อจนเจนปีกรองขนมเป่งเนี่ยใส่บันฝึกการติเตียนอย่างคลั่งตัวเลือดสกัยกล้ามหรือบอลโลคิวพูนท่ามันอาจชื่อเจ็บบานเต้สกายกรรมหลบพิพวนได้หลบพิพวนชลายนับไปนุ่งคือเมียงกาฝุ่งเวงฝุ่งวอนเข้มส้มจุ่มลักจุนอ่องจุ่มนมจุ่มแดงในกะลาเตสันนักสถานอภิเจษได้นับไปได้เมตวิกาเปียกได้สูสเอ่อสมนัวเตอร์นังเอ่อสะใสรูปนี้ประสันมาเยี่ยงปีนัดเมื่อหนึ่งขนมปัตเตจรักษาวนาคาดับจมหลายสะใสนี้เนื้อไงตีปีใครใส่ห้าชั่นนำปีปอนดับปีเนื้อเป้ได้เมตวิกาเปียกได้คิวสมพรสูสสมนัวยืนนั่งสังเกตเขินท่าปัจจัยกระเตะในการสู้จมโนระบบเมตุวีนี้คือเตอร์บานองจมนมจมแรงรุมเล็กหนึ่งดาเตือนจมโนดอกใบเล็กดาเตือนปรับกอดหาสมโลกกลมสู้จมโนจมได้กลมสู้จมโนปันสมานกลมสู้จมโนหนวมกกลมสู้จมโนได้ปีบะยลหายดมเริ่มเอาเมตุวีคิวสมพรเพื่อการสร้างในติตังให้นั่งสมรองได้กอดจังสู้สะสยไอบานตรมเตอร์กับไอขบเลิกปีนี้ตัดเตี้ยกอดบานเลือกลางถ่าคิวสัมพอนเหมือนบานโจรุ่มน้องเกิดไปจมในเต้หลบนวลชี้บานเย็นเฉิงเขี้ยมส้มรวมเลือกถ่าหลบนวลชี้กอดชี้จุนจับจับเหมือนเนี่ยนึกน้องสมนองเรื่องนี้สมองจมน้องจะได้ปิจารณาดาวสุเพรวินิชัยท่าต้าสกายกรรมหรือบอกก่อนอาจจะเจ็บบานดอกกุมรนาแต่ต้องจมวยนังมูลหัดในการจมเลียบไปเชี่ยจนเฉิงรายการสมเด็จกรอบใบดอกบอ้ามไรกังโลกบานเลิกล้างถ่าโลกปองโชคบานปรับถ่าแต่เฮียนขมายกับห้อมนั่งไปเชียร์จนคือเกมิงกาเพย์คลายมิงกาปัดตังกอปัดตังเกิดเ
นี่ชี้สักใครกำหนดบอลโลกปองโชได้เมทวีกาเปียกได้บันเลือกหลังโลกปองโชบันบันทายติดในครองตุ่มปอดติดดับใบชีพิซาขมายเลือกปีเรื่องตุ่มเละอามบริกังตุ่มเละกรอบใบหรือบอสมาติกรงเอาไว้ได้เทอร์เอาโยลปีโกบมน้องขมายกับหอมกู้กรรมมาผิดบาดได้ปรับขยมทางประสนบาปเจียจนเนติกรงเตวีสไลดัมสเลชกาเปรย์สตุงสเลชโรสเลเกนึงดังดัมไลดับปัดปากกอดในดอกบ่อไว้ไว้จังอ๋อไม่เติร์ดดังทางคลุนไอ้กรอบกาวปีกรอบสเลนี่คือเจียวไว้ได้กอดโยลปีขมายกับหอมในสมัยนู้นกอดบานอ้างเตียท่าในขนมตุ่มปอติดดอกปรำบุญชีพิซาขมายเตียท่าไอ้องก้าเกปุกไก่กับหอเกยยุเล่ตลอดเตอร์พนมเป็นดัมเบย์สำหรับเกนี่คือมีนิยายอย่างจะมาองค์การยุคแรกเป็นชาวเกดับเบย์สำหรับเกกิจท่าเกิดสมจอชมุนในกระดาคีนองค์การนำปกโกลมุกงีองค์การเป็นชาวเกดับเบย์สำหรับเกนี่ชื่อสมเด็จระบาดลบปงโฉจิตทำไมมาดองติดดาวมาดังรับประเวณีสมจุมเรียบจุนองจุมนมจุมเรียธาได้ทราบเปียกกับหอแดงนี่ให้เตอปุ่กเกเตอเจนตีลมในธาระบาดปุ่กเกหายตะลงตกเวทนาโดยเด็กอ่องจุ่มนมจุ่มแรงมาสนับกลมมาหอยแกต้องจุ่มมวยนังมูลและให้ในการจุ่มเลือดประเชื้อชนเจนได้กงวาสเบียงโลกท้ากงวาสเบียงก็เป็นใต้สะเคยกำหนดบอดดาวมันดังรับประเวณีเจอชราบานปรับท้าในเป้เด็กไม่ก็หอมจุ่มเลือดปวดกัดเจนตีกระไหลมวยเตยกระไหลมวยพอดใบชนะผมใบคายมาเผยทั้งไงนั่งติดเกนเอาแต่ควาสเบียงเกนเอาแต่เวทนาเนี่ยมันอาจจะใส่ปัญหาถึงอ่อนนิมานให้จุ่มนมมวยเตยได้จนตรงกลัวสามารถจะตุ้ยเตยให้เนี่ยน่าก็อาจโยบานก็สู้ท่าบาสันจีเนี่ยไอ้มีมูลหาดซ้ำเท่ากับวัสบิงแมนก็หอบไปเชียร์จนเฟอร์เอ้ยก็หอบท่าอันบริตมเล็กกรอบใบแต่ไอ้ปรับเกย์ตรองตือท่าควาสบิงช่างโยจะตุกดักกาเปียเนี่ยไอ้ช่างจุ่มเลี้ยงเนี่ยไอ้เตอร์ดับเบิลเนี่ยไอ้เมียนสบิงปรับเกย์ตามตรองตือหายไปจูนเกย์ตลอดมาพนมเป็นวิญญาณเอาไปเดินเนี่ยเฟอร์กาหายตายเนี่ยอัดเมียนตีโดยเฉพาะอมนาอมนางนี่คือเหมือนตรองตือมุ้ยเตี๋ยแต่ต้องจุ่มมวยนังซ้อนตรากระทาดอกบอลโลกคิวสมพรได้ออฟออสเจจุ่มเนื้อไงติดดอกปมปอลเมซ่าเนื้อขนมซาบนาคาไงติดดอกปมใบตุลากระลอมมันนี่เนื้อใส่องตากิเซบันเลือกหลังท่าโลกคิวสมพรไลน์ซ้อนตรากระทาออฟออสซาโต้ปีเจจุ่มเนื้อบอกไม่ก็หอมวิ่งเหมือนจะเรื่องเขาจะบับเต้แต่กอดออฟออสรูปกลุ่มนัดในโยบายบอกกอดบ้านตัวตัวเจจุ่มเนื้อเข้มชงเอาติดเข้มส้มกลุ่มเจนองจุ่มนมจุ่มแร่ดำใบเฟอกาปิดนัดเหลืออมนาอมนางเตะตรงจุ่มมวยนกบกเลือกและขณะนังตู้เนี่ยตีดอกบอลลูกคิวสมพรเลือกล่างได้ลูกเมทวีกงสมอนเวงกดบานเลือกล่างท่าลูกคิวสมพรเหมือนบานโจรุมโจรนักไม่ก็หอมได้สมัครปิดเจตเต้กดบังคอมเจตเต้ดำใบกดรู้ชีวิตองจุ่มนมจุ่มแร่นังซัวสมนุ่ยโดยจีบขยมถ้าบอลลูกคิวสมพรเหมือนบานโจรุมโจรนักนี่โดยสมัครปิดเจตฮัดไว้บานจุ่มลูกเตาออฟออเจจุ่มเนี่ยดอกบอกปุ๊กเก้ไอ้ปลุกกลมนัดในโยบายดอกบอลลูกบ้านตะตัวเจจุ่มเนี่ยโดยเฉพาะเลิกใต้กลมนัดในโยบายดอกบอลลูกคิวสมพรคือเชียร์กลมนัดในโยบายดอกบอลถนัดดอกน้องขมายกับหอมแต่งอ่อนนุ่มได้ดมเร่อเมียงกาจุ่มเลี้ยงไปเชียร์ชนเจงต้องจุ่มต่อยมวยเตี้ยได้หลงเมทีวีคิวสมพรบานเลือกล้างท่าเนื้อเป็ดได้จุ่มเลือกไปเชื่อเจนเจนจีปีปีพนมเป่งเตยกาตะปีใบสับปะดาเตะก็ปั้นใต้ดอกจุ่มเลือกไปเชื่อเจนเจนดำหนักกาตีปีหัดไอ้ก็เตยกาดอกเป็ดบุญขายรอบตังปิดไงปีดอกผมเปิลเมซ่าเจ็ดสับปะมระหอบมาดอกเจ็ดสับปะมวยดามเจ็ดสับปะมวยกึ่งบุญขายเกาะรอบเคยบุญขายเข้มส้มชลายตอบนั่งจุ่มต่อยนี่หลงเมทีวีคิวสมพรบานพลิกเนื้อขนมเป็ดได้โลกปีนัดเตลือพอตังให้ลูกนังเคยสักให้คำเชื่อชานแต่งสะใสแต่งดำบดดังรอบประเวณีแต่งไอกระซ่าบอกการไปเชื่อไปเชื่อทับตายคือบ้านบางไฮชาการจุ่มเลือดไปเชื่อชนคือเชื่อการอนุวัตบนโตบนโตให้เหมือนแม่เชื่อการจุ่มเลือดได้กับนอตเอาจับดำนับปีนี้ให้เธอมันจับนับปีนี้ต้เชื่อการจุ่มเลือดไปเชื่อชนรอหดให้เมื่อสักให้คำบอกดำบดดังรอบประเวณีเชื่อชานบ้านบันเชื่อท่านับปีเก็บบ้านปรับกอดไอเตอร์นี้นับปีได้กอดชกนับกันเลยนั่งเก็บปรับกอดท่าเติมมุกตีดเก็บปรับกอดท่โดยเฉพาะก่อนมันไอ้เฟอร์กาเกะในเนื้อเป็นนังดำใบยมดอกบรรทุกดอกบอกก่อนมาเลยก่อนในยี่ท่าจนในตระบานเกจุ่มเร
đại quan giới thái quan mau bị bắt tập bóng mà rốt mau phân bình về đại quan tập ban cái chấm liên tập bắt tập bóng với cái mình ai quan tận nơi phun cầm nát được bao quan tề quan giới thái nhưng mình ai nơi sau cầm nát ban được hậu tề ở đây dễ về và hai một hai cái mà cho chung một đục nhom trong cuộc sa năng phải chia chân đầu tây tiết ảo phơ đầm nát từ một tiền cái đại dương lang cần nốt lang cặp ba chạy trên tây dương mình đang thay tây tina tề nhưng mình chọc sầm rong trong cái lại này ai buộc nhưng mình miền về nằm bên bên trong này sẽ có đây sau này than chai tàu được bao nhiêu khiêm sông đồng lực lộc khi sầm phòn tha mình nuốt sợ thoa cứ chỉ riêng đây nẹt đực non cục rụp trời cất hai vị cha rồi nè hai chị ăn tiệp hiệp sầm khăn nước non cà để kệ đực non mỏng và chia chân và tay chia được bao kì khiêm thì dây nó tin nít pi mình nuốt sợ thoa mình mang pi này vô bãi rồi mình nấu công vị chiều và chưa chôn cứ chỉ mà nụ đại thân nạn đất non thì mua thì mua trời vô chất tục đã hơi thay đẹp xa bộ kê mình mến chỉ cam vật thô sừng kiếm đại phía kia này sừng kiếm trời đam dọc ảnh khang tại bán mình thay tờ lẹp bóng chỉ vật đồng miên làm lại được bao bộ kê đo của mật nạn hụt tì lẹ cả nạn chỉ nạn đất non là ổ đai xả lãnh chít đôi đầy bộ lộp tay tại A Ang nâng chùm bùa mục xa vần nạ ca nâng chùm bùa mục chôn rôn cơ này được bao khai cả hòm nâng bà chưa chôn khai chùm nón cao bất chi mình ai ham một đom cái tệ được bao lâu ao từ tu khó trơn nữa hai cái chuyện sẽ đành để thả cái ông cả đực nuông được bao bộ lâu bất tệ này ban khai chỉ việc bị khiết ban bản so tụng nửa năm ngủ ngất không bỏ vật từ xa sầm rạp rồi chia chia chùm nón rồi chia chia không ai chùm nón cào ấy hai kiếm chưa thả một đom cái tệ năng sầm pan chỉ nhẹ chỉ chôn sai hai chuyện nửa ham lâu mình ao lâu thôi chỉ một mọt đo sừng hai này được bao cam bất chia bất chia thập tay nửa lời cha on trả chuyện nửa nửa chùm buông một bất chia chôn không ai chấm nón đâu nâng chấm nón đi chấm nón to từ tiệm đâu lại hay chấm chưa tha cả từ tu công hoa để cả mình tiệm khuôn mình tiệm đồng mình tiệm đồng nơi không được dạy về cầm nón mùi lâu ai chẳng tự bàn ở ao tàu ao bị sầm nặng bị chia chôn slow trăng đại chúa chôn rong kêu rọc liền nè không được bọc đại lộc mang cục rong trầm tai rồi dạy về bảy chín năm bảy khai mà phải thay bẩn nó chỉ bên trong đang bận đăng rập về ní chưa chết hà sầm nuốt chẳng lại để bộ quạt bàn lẹ tục ban xu khuôn ảnh, rồi ban xu khuôn từ bên từ mọc nông chấm nam chân rong cụt đôi khuôn này thả hạt ở vây đội đại lộ sợi mê từ vị Christine Martino bàn lược lao được ngày báo chạy này dưới đây xoay thẳng bên trọng này nâng tờ báo bằng hai lạng đòi tụ lạc này nó bên này cả có họ cả sống ngặt rồi bóng mê đực nông khai có hòm lê miên bởi sợ tập hiệp tiện hời hãy chân rong cụt tặng ớt chưa thả bần tốt bí sai vần ác ca chi bộ vật tờ xa nị bàn bình chọc tàu sống nuốt tiền nên nâng tờ bàn lúc chanh bì cùng nất nâng chất ở bóng bộ quạt đại ni chỉ này mùi này cam chỉ bà chia sẻ nạn cam phơi chất độc bọt quạt hời vì chỉ cả bằng hai pi sẽ sống khăn để cà chua rung độc bọt quạt nông niêm chỉ phía kỳ mùi này sầm nòng rừng trồng mật toàn đại bộ quạt chỉ chân rong kêu này ẩm bơ ốc tật cam đọt nguồn ngô chmu tha ốc tật cam bọt trang mật nước chiết cha sầm ao con lô bát thiên à ốc con hay chỉ bắt đầu từ nay ông mới bắt đầu việc cài chun từ thời điểm nhé, nó mới là cái đại sản thản top trong cõi bắc luôn. Good morning, Mr. President. Your Honor. This year on the 29th of May, in this courtroom, civil party will be called to testify. This year on the 29th of May, in this courtroom, civil party. Ho Chan Ta appeared before Your Honours and told the court about losing 22 members of her family during the regime of Democratic Kampuchea and how those events had affected the rest of her life. And she told you, and I quote, Today I am so excited that I am given the opportunity by this international court to cross the oceans in order to come here to find justice for them and for the Cambodian people. This is the day I have been waiting for more than 30 years. And she added, to your honors, I would like to make a request, which is the international court, to judge fairly and justly in proportion to the gravity of the crimes. Mr. President, your honors, that is all we ask. 
on behalf of the co-prosecutors that you judge this case fairly and justly in proportion to the gravity. If the evidence did not prove the accused guilt beyond a reasonable doubt, it is your duty to acquit. But we have shown you that the evidence in this case is clear and convincing, and the evidence of the crimes and the gravity of the crimes proves the accused's guilt beyond a reasonable doubt and justifies the sentence that the co-prosecutor, Chai Liang, asked you for last week, a sentence of life in prison. Your Honor, it's a privilege to appear in this court in these historic proceedings. My name is Nicholas Kumjian. I will address you briefly, mainly regarding the legal requirements of joint criminal enterprise. Then my colleagues, Keith Rayner, will address you, address you on issues regarding the specific crimes that we are dealing with in case 0201. My colleague Dale Lysak will address specifically issues related to the responsibility of Nun Chia, and Tariq Abdul Haq will address issues related to the liability of Kisang Pan. Over the four previous days of court hearings, we heard submissions from very talented, experienced, well-staffed defense teams uh, vigorously defending their clients. But what they told you is that this entire trial is a propaganda exercise on behalf of the backers of the court and is, is and never was intended to prove the truth of the charges that it's just propaganda. There are very arguments disprove that allegation. Your honors allowed them for four days to put forth all of these allegations and all of these arguments before galleries filled with hundreds of people broadcast over the internet to the world. So this is not a propaganda exercise. The defense has been given every opportunity to make its allegations. This is a trial dealing with the truth. And in our submissions, those truths are that the accused in this case are responsible for some of the gravest crimes committed in history. All of these arguments were done by the defense without any interference from the court, from any donors of the court, or from any other source. They were free to say what they wished to say. They've argued that the verdicts, convictions in this case, are predetermined. We agree that the evidence is so strong that the only just verdict in this case, our convictions, just verdicts, our convictions of the accused. But that's based on the evidence. If what the defense alleges were true, where is Ng Tariq? We started this trial with four accused, but your honors ruled that because of her mental incompetence, Ng Tariq could not get a fair trial. So what these proceedings have shown is that every effort is being made to assure the accused get a fair trial. The defense would have you believe that Q San Pan and Nun Chia are victims of an international conspiracy. This is both illogical and delusional. There is no need by anyone in the international community or in Cambodia to discredit the Khmer Rouge. They are already discredited. They have no popular support, no international support today. They are politically and militarily inconsequential. This case isn't about politics or propaganda. 
It's about addressing crimes, historic crimes of the greatest magnitude that happened a long time ago. But in this international, if international law is going to mean anything, crimes of this gravity cannot be ignored. The defense even attacked the prosecutors and your honors, the judges, saying that we were incapable of understanding their clients because, among other reasons, we come from capitalist countries, some of us, and former colonial powers. Who actually made these arguments on behalf of the defense? Lawyers from the former colonial Asian colonial powers of France and Australia. They make the argument that the prosecutors and the judges must be following the orders of other states. But it's clear, I compliment them. They did a tremendous job for their clients. They have very talented teams. They fought vigorously and they continue to fight vigorously on behalf of their clients. Clearly, although funded by the court, Clearly, although they are lawyers from France and from the Netherlands and many of their colleagues from the United States, taking orders from no one, trying to uphold justice on behalf of their clients, this proves that there is no interference, uh, that it, we are capable of doing our duty. There is an arrogance, frankly, in that defense argument, a feeling of moral superiority that somehow defense counsel are capable of fulfilling their roles in a system of justice, but prosecutors and judges are not. And for those who may not have that experience, this is not the first time in an international tribunal that desperate defense teams have made that allegation. Uh, just recently, in the appeal decision, in the trial of the former president of Liberia, Charles Taylor, uh, the appeal court addressed very similar allegations by the defense for Charles Taylor. In paragraph one, excuse me, 717, the concurring opinion of Justices Winter and Fisher stated, furthermore, suggesting that the judges of this court would be open to the argument that we should change the law or fashion our decision in the interests of officials of states that provide support for this or any international criminal court is an affront to international criminal law and the judges who serve it. The defense has interjected a political and highly inappropriate conceit into these proceedings, which has no place in courts of law and which has found no place in the judgment of this court. And we are confident that the same is true uh, for your honors. The defense arguments we also believe have assisted in focusing on what are the real issues in this case. Because the defense have made it clear there are many concessions we submit in the defense arguments. Kyu Sampan was the public face of that regime. He doesn't, it seems to us, the defense team does not deny that. He was the representative internationally and to the Cambodian people. Nun Chia's team repeatedly acknowledged he was second in command of the CPK in the Democratic Republic of Kampuchea, those that ruled the country during that regime. So really, I believe what we have can agree on with the defense is this trial is about the policies of the CPK, of Democratic Kampuchea, of the Khmer Rouge. Were those policies criminal or were they legitimate? Were they simply fulfilling their ideological beliefs or did their actions amount to crimes? In our view, the answer is absolutely clear. Throughout that regime, there was a campaign of crimes directed against the Cambodian people. 
Ideology is not the issue in this case. The accused are not being prosecuted because of their ideology. They could, be, could have been espousing capitalism. They could have been espousing a fascist ideology. It doesn't matter if people are advocating a religion or theocracy or they claim that they're taking actions to fight terrorism. When governments or those in power, in order to achieve whatever political objectives they have, subject citizens, civilians to crimes such as persecution, enslavement, torture, murder, that is a violation of international law. It is not their ideology that's at stake. It's not their ideology that we attempt to discredit. They discredited themselves with the four years of crimes against the people of Kampuchea that that regime carried out. And, Your Honor, we have in our submissions discussed various modes of responsibility that apply legally to the crimes that took place. I'm going to concentrate on one, that is joint criminal enterprise, because we believe it is probably the mode of responsibility that best describes the conduct. That ultimately will be up to your honors. The case law is clear that when multiple different modes are applicable, it's up to the trial chamber to choose the one that they believe best fits the facts of this case. I'm not going to go through all of the basics of joint criminal enterprise because it was described absolutely accurately in your own judgment in case 01, in the case against Doit, in paragraphs 507 and 508, we talked about the requirements, particularly of the first two categories of joint criminal enterprise. The basic category we're all accused agree on a crime, the plurality of persons agree on a crime. And the, the, the accused has made a significant contribution to the enterprise. And the second category, which is a systematic uh, joint criminal enterprise where characterized by an organized system of mistreatment. Your honors have made clear in those paragraphs what also has been well established in international law. The second character category, systematic joint criminal enterprise, is simply a variant of the first. It's a variant that is usually used to describe concentration camps, vast prisons, systems of mistreatment. And it is extraordinary, we admit, certainly extraordinary, to apply that principle to an entire country. We submit, though, that the facts of democratic Kampuchea were extraordinary. Democratic Kampuchea is not similar to other historic events and was a system nationwide of mistreatment of the citizens of Cambodia. The only difference that the cases articulate and your honors articulated between JC 1 and 2 is how you articulate the intent. The intent in 1 is that each of the accused has the intent to commit a crime under the jurisdiction of the court, that all agree on that. And in JC 2, it is that the accused is aware of a system of mistreatment involving crimes under the jurisdiction of the court and intends to further that system. In my view, those are actually identical because if you are aware of a system of mistreatment involving crimes, you intend to further that system and that those crimes, you have the intent for those crimes. One thing that's important to understand well established in international law is that the ultimate objective or the stated objective of the members of the joint criminal enterprise may itself be non-criminal. If the means that they contemplate to use to achieve that result are themselves criminal. 
And this is applicable to this case where the closing order articulates a joint criminal enterprise as, I believe, um, seeking a rapid socialist revolution and to protect themselves from perceived enemies. That in itself, as the closing order acknowledges, is not criminal. But the closing order makes it clear that the accused intended all of the crimes charged as a means to achieve that. And that's from the closing order, the specific paragraph showing that the accused are charged with intending all of the crimes are paragraphs 1524, 1533, 1537. This issue came up again in a decision in the Charles Taylor case. There was a decision of the appeal chamber from the 1st of May 2009, where the appeal chamber reaffirmed, quote, that the common purpose comprises both the objective of the JCE and the means contemplated to achieve that objective. In Taylor, the objective was charged as controlling the people and resources, excuse me, the people and territory of Sierra Leone, and in order to exploit the resources, not itself a violation of international law, but the indictment made clear that was to be achieved by means of terrorizing the civilian population in order to control the means and territory. So the appeal chamber found the indictment proper because the means that were contemplated to achieve the JCE were criminal. Similarly, in the Martich case from the ICTY, the indictment had charged an objective of uniting ethnically similar areas. And the appeal judgment, paragraph 123, stated that the objective of uniting these areas was not itself a criminal purpose, but, quote, where the creation of such territories is intended to be implemented through the commission of crimes within the statute, this may be sufficient to amount to a common criminal purpose. And one thing important to keep in mind Intent is not the same as motive. It is not necessary to show a person intended a crime to show that that was the specific objective that they sought, so long as it is clear that they were aware that the consequence of their action would, in all likelihood, it's articulated different ways in different systems and the natural course of events would, um, would achieve that result. This is how your honors describe that uh, intent in case 01, in the judgment in paragraph 481, the accused must have acted with the intent to commit the crime or with an awareness of the substantial likelihood that the crime would occur as a consequence of his or her <coughs> the Lubanga judgment, the International Criminal Court, dealing with a very similar mode of responsibility that they call their co-perpetration, said in paragraphs 986 and 987 that the elements are established if, quote, implementation embodies a sufficient risk that in the ordinary course of events a crime will be committed. And the appeal, the uh, trial chamber in Lubanga found that Article 30 of the ICC statute, which deals with intent, is satisfied if, quote, co-perpetrators are aware of the risk that the consequence prospectively will occur. And this is extremely relevant to this case and some of the defense arguments because your Honor, there can be no doubt in that force transfer from Phnom Penh in April of 1975. Many people were dying of starvation, of dehydration, of lack of medical care. People whose undoubtedly names Kusampan Nunchia do not know. 
people who, who, who they never met, and it's not necessary for us to show that they intended that specific death. What's necessary to show is simply that they were aware that the consequence of their action, in this case expelling millions of people with no notice in April from the Phnom Penh would result in these deaths, would result in killings uh, and other crimes that occurred in the course of these transfers. Further, Your Honor's intent may be inferred, that is clear from the case law. It can be inferred, inferred in many ways. In Kraishnik, at paragraph 890, the trial chamber and the trial judgment said that the information the accused received during this period is an important element for the determination of his responsibility because knowledge combined with continuing participation can be conclusive as to a person's intent. And this is exactly what the evidence shows with Nun Chia and Q Sam Pak, who continued as second in command and as the public face, the representative of the Khmer Rouge, clearly with information knowing about the ongoing crimes and terror, they continued to participate, demonstrating without doubt this was their intent to further these crimes. In Kavachka Appeal Judgment, paragraph 243, the ICTY Appeal Chamber set an intent to further the efforts of the joint criminal enterprise, quote, may also be inferred from knowledge of the crimes being perpetrated in the camp and continued participation in the functioning of the camp. So we see when the crimes are obvious, when the crimes are ongoing, an accused, particularly one in such high positions of responsibility, continues to participate in, in those uh, efforts in the system of mistreatment. That itself is proof of their intent, the necessary intent to convict them for those crimes. Your Honor, this could be a convenient point to break, if you, Mr. President, if you would like, or I could continue. สมมติสําหรับให้เป็นประกาศสําหรับจับไปปีนี้ตัวเต๋อโหดดํามองดอกมุ้ยขวาดดอกเนี่ยตีส่งมาเชิญโจ